welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. My name is Lisa Curcio. And my name is Gina Curcio Holly, better known as her daughter. We are thrilled that you are here with us tonight, whether this is your first time with us live or perhaps yes. you're watching the replay. It's a big privilege to have you here. Absolutely. And we're super excited to demonstrate the fun fold that tops them all. It sure does. And it's <laughs> because it's called an expanding trifold Miura card. Or a mirror card. And we've seen it called both things, but quite frankly, it is an origami fold. But wait. Yeah, don't. We don't know worry. you're going to probably yeah. think, oh no, I'm out. This is not hard. No. And we've got some fantastic tips for you to make this quick and easy. And all you're going to need is your Stampin' Up! paper trimmer. Yeah, that's all you need. Now, a couple things about tonight's live stream I want you to know about is definitely the project sheet. We have six completed projects, but... We kind of got a little crazy because, like we said, this card is fantastic. So we have two additional, and if you're keeping count, that's eight total samples to share with you tonight. So make sure you stick around because that project sheet will be made available for direct download right underneath this video in the description. Or if you're watching live, it'll be made available in the live chat after we're done demonstrating. Yeah. It's going to include multiple pictures, cutting yeah. dimensions, a template that she made, and of course, all the supplies for the projects that we created. So six of the eight are going to be there to our bonuses yeah. for the live stream. Now, the last couple housekeeping items are first, we want to introduce you to our moderators yeah. for tonight. So first, I'd like to introduce you to Bob Curcio. His name is in blue, better known as Bob the Builder. Or my dad. <laughs> he doesn't do too well with the stamping no. part, but he's great with the links. So he is here to provide those. And we also have the one and only Marion Lenhart. She's a part of the stamp studio team here. And unlike my dad, she is great at all things stamping. So if you do have a stamping related question, please feel free to ask her. But do know that she is just one person. Mm -hmm. So if your question does go unanswered, Answered. We'd love for you to reach out to us at lisastampstudio.com. Just hit that contact button and we'll make sure to get back to you. Fantastic. And the last thing is we love to chat with you. Whether you are watching live or perhaps you are watching the replay, you can comment or live chat. But YouTube requires that you log into your Gmail address to use their live chat function. That's it's on, on them. them. Yeah. yeah, it's on us. I think we're ready. Yeah, let's get started. All right, let's go. All right, the very first thing we're going to start tonight is actually with the stamping. I'm going to bring in a little bit of grid paper here for that. And I'm going to be using this Magnificent Heron stamp. Isn't this sharp? I love this. Okay, show so off the stamp set. Yes, I'm going to actually show you because I always buy things in bundles. Do you? Absolutely. Okay, so a bundle means you get both the coordinating dies and the stamps at a discount of 10%. Right. And quite frankly, why, it's would you, worth it. why would you want one without the other, yeah. right? Who wants to do all the fussy cutting? So I'm using Heron Habitat. And I've gone ahead and I've pulled out what's going to be my beautiful heron. Now, I will tell you here in Florida, I'm a little partial to herons because we have lots of them where I live. And I'm also going to bring in a piece of scratch paper here. Now, I'm going to teach you a technique. Yeah. Because you might look at this and think, oh, I don't want to color it, especially if it's an outline image. Now, there's some great detail in here, but this is a really, really fun technique. So I'm going to open up the crumb cake ink first and then next to it, the flirty flamingo. And you're probably thinking, flirty flamingo? Well, here in Florida, we have lots of different colors of birds. Yep. And one of them is a roseate spoonbill, which of course this isn't. But I wanted to give this a little color. Dimension. Yeah, and yeah. I wanted it to coordinate with the designer series papers. So don't feel like a heron can only be brown. gray or brown. Yeah. Right, okay. So I'm going to use the crumb cake ink, and I'm going to ink this up. Face up on my work surface, I am going to come in with a special dauber for flirty flamingo. And I am going to go right over the areas. You're going to see I'm rubbing off that excess so I don't transfer it right over to where I want to add a little bit of color. Okay. And then I'm going to give that a good huff. <sighs> that re-moistens the ink, better known as what Lisa calls the Darth Vader technique. Look Love at that. It. Isn't that beautiful? Yes. Okay. So obviously I use the dyes ahead of time. And that gave me this little heron. Now, no two images are going to look exactly the same. And that's what's so fun about this technique is it's easy to do. It levels up your cards. Yes. But every card looks a little bit different. Right. And you can add as much or as little color as you want. And you can see 
a lot of experimenting goes a really long way. Sure. Now, you use the same technique in your card, did, did you not? I did, and I'm going to pull that out right now so you can kind of see what I did. We didn't plan this, by the no, way. No, we didn't. <laughs> so we just use the same technique because it's just so fun. So it you is. should try it. Yeah, definitely a great upsell. Now, I am going to work on a focal point for my card as well, and I'm just going to show you what I did ahead of time. Now, this is another set of dies that are brand new in the annual catalog. It's called the Deckled rectangles. And I wasn't sure about this when I first saw Either it. It's Marion's fault. That's why I bought it. <laughs> no, it? Well, honestly, I love it. Now I that do I've too. seen you use it yep. a few times, it's yep. on my wish list. It's fantastic. Yep. So I use the exact same technique here for the images of the cattail and the granary in the sand mm -hmm. with the daubers. Easy. And I got multiple colors for one single stamp. Yep. So that's really a great way to expound on their use. So I die cut the deckled with one size here and then another size here. And the great part about these dies, I want to make sure you see this. There's some extra greenery pieces in here that I die cut. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're a little bit smaller. And sometimes people are intimidated about putting those together. But I'm going to give you some tips. I just wanted to show you this first because this is going to play a key factor for the front of our card. And just a little bit. Yes. So I'm going to step those off to the side. And here comes the fun part. So let's yep. start with some scoring. I am going to grab what's going to be my card base. Now again, all the cutting and scoring dimensions are going to be in the project sheet. So I don't want you to be stressing out about trying to remember and write them all down. I made it super easy for you. And the template is awesome. Exactly, love it. This is the Stampin' Up! Paper Trimmer, best thing best ever. Yeah. Because it includes both the cutting and the scoring blades. They navigate up and down out of the way. And you're gonna find out why critical use of this to make this card is gonna make your life so, so easy. It also has an extended arm, and we are going to use that tonight. Now, it goes just past 17 inches, which is great for our scrapbookers out there as well. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do two vertical score lines. Now, the card base is 5.5 by 10.5. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work up with my light blade, which is the scoring blade, at the top. And I'm going to do the first score line at 3.5 inches. Now, if you're like me and you do absolutely nothing straight, we got you covered. There's a ledge here. There's another one at the bottom. So whether you like to do cutting and scoring here or lower, it's going to be nice and straight. So three and a half inches, and then we're going to score. And then I'm going to move over to seven inches, and then I'm going to score. Okay, that's it for the verticals. Now I'm going to leave it exactly where it's at. So this is lined up at seven inches. And I am going to take my favorite pencil. Yes. <laughs> now I get a lot of emails about this pencil and I love this for crafting. It is made by Bic. It's nothing special, but I have it linked for you. Mm -hmm. The lead is ultra soft. The eraser is a champ. So if you make marks on your card, like we're going to do, it's going to come right off and you're going to love it. Mechanical pencils are fantastic for paper trimmers like this because not only can you see through here, but you can make a mark through here which is going to make it super duper easy. You're going to find this linked on my website under the shop tab and then craft room favorites. And you'll find a bunch of cool things that I love to use with my Stampin' Up! projects. And you're going to find that this is going to be there for you to find. All right, really important. We are going to need to make a tick line on those vertical score lines at two inches. So do you see here where it says two inches? And that might be difficult to see, but there's a two inch little ruler here. I am literally going to follow this across and I'm going to put my pencil mark there. I am then going to move this over and I'm going to do the exact same thing at three and a half inches. Remember that was the other score line. So I'm just literally lining it back up where we started. No, Gina's saying no. You got to flip it. Oh, thanks. I almost forgot that part. I got excited. So did you see what I just did? I took it. Here's my pencil mark and I turned it. I almost made a mistake, Gina. Back at seven. Yep. You're good. All right. See what happens when you talk and you craft at the same That's time? That's why we're here together. <laughs> That's awesome. Two inches right across here, and you're going to make a little pencil mark. Now, I'm trying to keep my head out of your camera view, and I want to make sure that I get a little pencil mark there. You know, when you get to be my age, honey, you got to have your head really, 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 <laughs> really, really close. All right, so those are going to be on the crease lines. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to make a pencil mark at the top of these crease lines here so that you can see them. That's going to be important. Guess what? We are just going to connect the dots. Yep. Now, again, the template is going to help you tons and tons. So the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to start. Oh, I think I'll just start 
Well, I'll should, start, should I start from here to here? Yeah, start from there to there. Okay. That's easy. All right, so we're going to start up here in the top right corner of the cardstock, and we're going to connect the corner to the dot. So I'm going to manipulate the paper so that this is in the track. Now I'm going to tell you, this clear cutting guy. Lifesaver. Lifesaver. Yeah. I know that I'm going to have to manipulate the paper so that I can see my tick mark here and the corner of the cardstock here. Now the blade will not engage until I press down. So I'm going to come here to where I know my tick mark is and I'm going to press up and down. Now Gina gave me an amazing little tip. She goes, Mom, go back and forth numerous times. Because it breaks down the paper. Right. Which is going to be crucial when we make this fold. Yeah, because the mirror fold requires some inversion and this is going to make it a lot easier. Now we're going to turn it and we are now going to connect this one to the top of here, which is the other crease line. So I'm going to look to navigate these again, closing the door looking here and here to try to keep those the best I can centered inside of there. I'm going to start here, go down to that dot, back and forth a couple times. You might be wondering, well, how do you know where you're stopping? The blade has a little marker on the side, yeah. which is impossible to see on camera, yeah. but it makes it super easy to use when you're in person. So now we've got this V here, which yep. is going to be really difficult to see. We're going to turn it. And we're, it. Yep. And we're going to do the exact same thing now. So we've got a score line here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from here to the corner. This is the exact same thing, but in two opposite directions. And I think, Gina, this is where the word mirror fold got in, right? Yes, I do think so. I know that the fancy word is mirror, and I hope I'm saying that right, because you know what? Someone will correct me if I'm doing it wrong, right? And then we're going to come over here, and we're going to do the exact same thing. So take your time when you do these creases. Use your clear paper trimmer from Stampin' Up. You will thank me. Best trimmer on the market, and not because I sell it. All right, so a couple score lines there. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right, so that's that for this. But there's more. There's more. So let's quickly go ahead and use our bone folder mm -hmm. to fold both of these because I think that's going to be helpful when we go to cut yes. our designer series paper. Yes, so mine is in petal pink. And mine is in old olive. Okay. You can see we have pretty much mimicking Exactly. Pieces here. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you we talked about that pencil, so I'm going to go ahead and use that eraser and look now. How well that just I'm comes just off. telling you, you got to have the pencil. Yeah. The pencil is a lifesaver, and I use it every day here in the craft room, and because it keeps everything nice and straight. All right. So let's work on the first okay. one using my favorite tool, the bone folder. Bone folder. I know yours is the take or pick. It is. We're going to argue about it to the day I die, <laughs> but mine's a bone folder. Okay. So for me, I like to remember that for the Mirror fold or mirror fold. Mirror. Yeah. Is you want to keep the tip, which will make sense in a second, in the left hand corner. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at this side right here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure I flip it that way. So the panel all the way to the right now, because now I'm, my tip is in the left, is to fold in. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to crease, crease. And what the bone folder does is really just make that that score line crisp, which yes. is super important, not only when you're card making, but especially with this card. Especially now, fun remember our tip here, you can barely see it, but there is a tip there, is gonna be the top, which is the front. So we wanna flip it and flip outside. Okay. I feel like we're in synchronized swimming here. I know, it's fun, right? <laughs> so now you have kind of a Z fold. You see that what's happening yeah, This here? is the expanding trifold part. Yep. All right, so now this mm -hmm. is the fun part. Remember, this is our left-hand corner tip. This dip or this V is going to go out or push down. So you're going to go just like that. It folds. So what happens is, is when you push here near the bottom, do you see how it starts to make this V? Yep. And then all you're going to do is give that a little push, and then you're going to collapse it on itself. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it, it does it automatically. Yeah. And Gina's tip about going over that score line a couple times, boy, honey, that really was a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So you're actually going to do the complete opposite now for the inside V. This is where the mirror comes yeah. from. And the you're going to be pushing up. So you're just going to take that paper, fold it a little bit, and it folds in on itself. And this is where that origami inspired Why am I trick comes in. difficulty? Wait, wait, wait. Got it. Got it. There we go. Yeah. All right. So take here yeah. and push up. Do you ever yeah. have something like one day it just plays with your brain? Okay. <laughs> so here, push up. So it gives you a crease and then this is going to come in. Yep. I like to slow things down a little bit for you just in case you're brand new with fun folds because I know when I was brand new, I was like, say what? So here we go. We have a trifold. Mm -hmm. One, two, and three. 
but check out those angles. Isn't that fun? Do we dare tell them what we're going to do to these angles? We're going to make some angles. We are. We're going to cover them in designer series paper. And they're thinking, and it's easy. no. They're thinking, no. It's very it's easy. easy. Very, okay, so very this easy. Hopefully it wasn't hard. Again, this template that I have, I'll briefly show you it. Super simple for you to do. Yep. Yeah. And it includes the designer paper cutting directions yep. on there too. So let's go ahead and go ahead and move on to the designer series papers. And let's set that to the side. Now, what I'm going to do is, this is super important if you have designer series paper that has patterns a going in a specific mm -hmm. direction. Mm -hmm. I know this, yours doesn't, but mine does. So this is important. So I'm going to bring this back in. Remember this tip at the top left corner that I told yep. you about, about the front? This is going to be crucial for when we cut our patterned designer paper in an angle. So what I'm going to do is take my first panel and I'm going to go ahead and open up this track. Put this in here, and at two inches, I'm going to make a mark. Again, this might be a light bulb moment because it was for me when I figured this out. This second line right here is the two Move inch it line. down just to here, I think. There we go. There we go. So this is the one inch line. This is the two inch line. All I'm going to do is make a little mark right here so I can see it. Okay. Now remember, this is our point in the top upper left hand corner. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that this is the point that I'm going to cut through. So for the second inch line, two inch line, I'm going to put it on an angle and then I'm going to close my clear cutting guide and all I'm going to do is cut at an angle. And now what you can see this is, the bomb. <laughs> is that it fits perfectly in that angle. Yep. But we need to cover one more, which is in the inside. Right. So let's do that one. Because Again, the paper has a direction. Yes, my you paper has a direction. Same. You can't cut them at the same angle, especially because they're opposite angles. Correct. It's the mirror effect or the mirror. Exactly. So now what I want to do is make a note that now my point is on the bottom right-hand corner. Right. So it's right here, which means I want my two-inch mark on the left-hand side of my directional paper. So I'm going to put this in. I'm going to 180 it. Mm -hmm. You turned it upside down. Yeah, and I'm going to go ahead and make a mark at that two inch. This is also where this straight line comes in handy because I know that's the two inch mark. Right. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and cut from that point to that lower right hand corner. Remember, when we're facing yep. right, right, it's going the right way. Right. So here you we go. You can do this. When you watch the replay and create it home, it's going to be so easy for yep. you. Cut. And look how that works out. Ah! Fantastic. Perfect. Okay. Fantastic. So that's fun, but we're not done yet. No, because right? we have these. We have these little corners up in here that we have to cover. Super fun. So we have two pieces of designer series paper here. They're exactly the same, but I switched it up. I changed it from the opposite sides. What's beautiful about Stampin' Up! designer series paper is that they're double sided. Like, look how fun this is. Mm. So you can choose what you want to choose. Yep. I'm going with this. Now, this is easier. You don't have to measure two inches or anything. You're simply cutting from point to point. We can all do that. Mm -hmm. But they need to be opposite points. Correct. So what I like to do, because Gina talks a lot, Gina thinks a lot, she gets confused, <laughs> is I know I'm going to start putting this one, this tip to this tip. So I'm going to make a mental note and just leave my second piece going the opposite direction so excellent. I can just slide an it excellent in idea. and not forget. So now, remember, just tip to tip. So line that up. And that clear cutting guide, again, is it a makes champ. It makes it so champ. easy. Now, I want to teach him a little trick about anchoring the blade. Okay. Okay? So we know now, because she positioned it that way, it's going to have to go this way. Now, if your paper trimmer often gets caught at these little tips, maybe oh, yeah. your blade is not sharp enough. That's good. So what you're going to want to do is anchor the blade. Do you know how to do this? You start in the middle. Yeah. So you're going to open this up. You're going to... Navigate this to the center. Mm -hmm. You got it lined up, right? Yes, now I do. Okay, then you're going to close the door and you're going to slice up and down. That gives you a thicker area of yep. cardstock to cut from so that you don't smash and ruin those pretty little corners. Super important. A lot of people say, it doesn't work. It works. It messes up my paper. And that's because of the blade. All right. Okay, you let's, want a nice sharp blade. Let's move on real quick. Okay. And I'll show them how to assemble these corners. In of course. Second. But let's move on to that center. Because yes. we're going to need a center. Okay, so here in the middle of the card, you're going to see, oh, isn't this incredible? The shape is probably making you think there is no way paper is going to go there. Okay, it is. It's very, very simple. So here we go. And Gina was giving me a tip about this. And I'm going to have you walk me through it because when she showed me her way, I was like, 
that was better than my way. Well, show them your way. Well, okay, so my way was this. I'm gonna move my scoring blade back up to the top because I'm gonna need that, all right? So what I did is I know that my angles are gonna go this way, right? So my cardstock is gonna have to go this way. So I opened it up and I lined it up at the two inch mark once again, and then I closed the door and I made a little pencil mark there, okay? And then I used that as my mark. So I can see this is gonna have to go from here to here, all right? And then I'm gonna let you, sh Gina, show them the next one, okay? Okay. So again, I'm looking to line those marks up inside the track, and then I am going to slice, all right? And Gina was like, well, okay, that's half, but mom, I got a better way. And I was like, all right. I don't know if it's better, it's just different. So what I did was I marked mine, like I showed you just previously, mm -hmm. pushed it to the top, marked my two inches. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, you can see your two inch mark right there. Right. Then what I did was I flipped it 180, pushed the top, marked my two inches. See, so she didn't have to close the door. Yeah, I didn't, I just, you know, removed a step. Right. Doesn't mean that it's wrong. There's just no. two different and ways this of doing is it. The fun part about crafting together is that you learn from friends and people you stamp with and craft right. with multiple ways to do the same exact result, right? Yep. This is what we always hope to accomplish. So now we got this really fun shape. And, and it fits right inside. There. Now I also want to give you one more tip while we're together. Um, because oftentimes when you have a really sharp blade like mine, you might notice that the edge of your cardstock is a bit raised. Mm -hmm. So lay it flat on your work surface, take your bone folder over it, and it's going to mash those fibers right down it's perfect. so you don't have any, any lifting on this. Then again, it's not going to be real visible to here. Yep. So this will be your center panel. So this is where I chose to do greetings and all that other good stuff. Yes. Okay. Now I did do that ahead of time just to save a little bit of time. You know, we forgot to tell them. We have an exciting announcement we do. tonight. We do have an exciting announcement. And do you want to tell them just a little just bit a little about it? sneak peek. We're doing an in-person event here soon. Yeah, we are. So you're going to want to stick around to the end to yeah. get more information on that one. Okay. It'll be fun. All right. Let's put it together. Yes. Yeah. But you have a twist to yours because she always has to be different. I do. But let's put the DSP on All right, first let's real quick. Okay. okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and assemble this designer series paper on this car so you can kind of see visually now. We have all these angles. Right. What do you do with all of them? Right. This is the perfect part to put it together. Okay, we're going to have to share. So you're <laughs> you're actually going to be using liquid glue. Which I, you I hate am. green glue. I hate, I hate, I hate liquid but glue. But you use it so <laughs> much. I do. I like it because when you have these pointed areas, I think it's really important to try to get adhesive as close mm. as you can. Gina's like, eh, I ain't yeah. doing that. All right, so I'm going to give you a tip. If you're a person like me who does not like liquid glue, run the tip actually on the paper. So you're dragging it right on the paper. You're not going to get big clumps. You're going to actually get like a little flat stream of glue. Mm -hmm. I like to keep my fingers here because the glue here is very, very strong. You'll find this in my online store. It's the multi-purpose liquid glue. And this is going to allow me to manipulate the paper to try to make it as even as possible before you mash it down. Yep. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the other side. Isn't this paper absolutely gorgeous? It. It's Beautiful. texture chic and it's brand new. It's in the annual catalog. You should probably tell them what stamp set I'm using, but tell them what the issue is. All right. So, so we have a, we have a live confession. Okay. Yes, so um, Gina lives about 20, 25 minutes from here. Yes. And we do not design our projects together. So she actually designs at her house and I actually design here. And then we get together for the mm -hmm. live and we're like, oh, wow, look what you did. Oh, wow, look what you did. And then she said, uh-oh, I forgot to bring the stamp set. And do you believe it? It it's was the one stamp that you don't own. What can I tell you? you how do you not own this? Okay, I, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. So it's called, I always forget. It's called Happier Than Happy. It's a bundle. It is adorable. It, it is makes cute. It, It's also a sweet, honestly. So I own all of this that you see here. And I don't need it because you have it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I actually have the designer series paper, which is what I'm using currently. And I'm using this stamp set that you will see come into play as I assemble my card. But it is absolutely adorable, especially because all my friends are having babies right now. And you know what I love about that stamp set is it's distinctive, which yes. means the images are going to look more realistic than stamped images. It is absolutely beautiful. I love distinctive. So I see that you're already making the angles. I want to kind of yeah. like show them how this works. I think it, it's pretty... It's like a puzzle. Straightforward. But it's it's a puzzle, so you can just kind of see... Where your angles go, I like to lay mine out before yep. because I get a little confused. <laughs> so it's going to go just like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and make those angles. And what's really important when you also have angled anything is if you have a straight line, use the straight line as your grounding line mm -hmm. and make sure that is straight. Right. Then your angles end up straight. 
They're probably wondering what this is. This is in my craft room favorites too. This keeps the tip of your bottle stored upside down, yeah. which means the glue is gonna flow freely. You're gonna love this. I cannot function without it. I don't ever have to shake the bottle. It's always ready to go. Now, again, the one reason I like liquid glue is I have a little bit more wiggle room, right? Mm -hmm. And I love that I can get adhesive in the corners and Gina's like, oh, heck no. The Stampin' Seal Plus is what she's using, obviously an adhesive in a cartridge. She's not afraid to extend the adhesive past the tips because it comes out in tabs and she yep. can simply wrap any excess to the back Which side. Which is exactly what I'm doing. Right. And she's like, I ain't dealing with that glue nonsense. But again, we love to show you two different ways to achieve the same result. Exactly. Right? So again, here's our trifold and then it, it expands. You recall now that I had a greeting. Yep. All right. So I'm going to cheat now. <laughs> I'm going to bring in my Stampin' Seal Plus because I am an adhesive girl. And I'm just going to be really careful to work in those corners. And I'm going to add a little here and a little there. And my arthritic hands are giving me a fit today. So I'm going to get my adhesive started on that silicone craft sheet. You're going to notice too, do you see how I stamped the grating on here? You might oh, be, at an angle. I did. Just because I thought, how fun is that? And it doesn't have to be straight, which I had such a hard time stamping things right. straight. And I thought, you know, when they open it, they're going to be more impressed with the fold at first. Yeah. And then gravitate to that greeting. If this is not enough room for you, you can make the same exact panel from mm -hmm. back here. It gives you a little bit more space. Yep. And all I did with my panel is you'll see a little bit of old olive. I just took a blending brush. Mm -hmm. I just Simple. made some, you know, contrast here instead of just Very dark pretty. white. Love so I'm going to go did. ahead and add that. You want to show them how you assembled your front piece. Yes. So do you remember I talked to you about the pieces that I die cut here? All right. So I want to give you some really, really great tips. I took the dies from soft succulent cardstock. There's a little bit of seagrass here, which is what I'm calling it. And I picked up that color from my designer series paper. Hmm. This paper is Beautiful. so striking. It has gold metallics on one side, double-sided like the others. Yep. Regular patterns on the, it's just, it's beautiful. All right, so the very first thing I decided to do is I knew I wanted to stick my hair in down. So I'm gonna need to grab my dimensionals. Hold on one second. I actually had those behind me. I forgot to bring them over. And I'm gonna grab one. And I am gonna be very careful about balancing this. Um, because of my arthritic hands, these little detailed things are hard for me. Yeah. So I love my take your pick tool because that helps me to lift things up. Now down here, I wasn't too concerned, but I do need to anchor the feet. Now these are the mini dimensionals. And if you're not aware with this, you can take your scissors and cut them in half and make them micro mini. Yep. So I'm going to take one of those halves right here and just pull that apart. There's always one who doesn't want to cooperate, right? And I'm going to add that here. That's just enough That's to anchor tip. this. So I'm using that paper piercing tool attachment to remove those backings because, again, that little tiny dexterity stuff for me is painful, painful. And then I am going to take my bird and I'm going to add him to that little grassy area here. And this is one reason why I decided to change it up. I was like, oh, I, I hit some of the good stuff. <laughs> so I said, okay, this is what we're going to do next. Watch, this is a great trick. You're going to make a little tiny puddle here. All right. I didn't even fuss with the precision mm -hmm. glue thing. All right. I'm going to drag this right inside of here. So it's nice and it's thin. And I'm going to glue that right on top of here. And then I'm going to take this one. And we're going to drag this one through here as well. And then you can put this one right behind here. So it's going to give you a little bit of dimension here. And the one thing about this liquid glue is it's quick drying, it but is. it's very strong. Yeah. It's very, very strong. All right. And then I'm going to put these two together. But awesome. you've got a twist. I do have a twist because, you know, yeah. you're, you're the best. So Hardly. I feel like I have to kind of like you always try, to try, me. try a little harder. <laughs> All right. So I'm actually going to make a pocket. What? Because, you know, I like pockets. A lot of my cards have pockets. When she showed me this card, I was like, darn it, kid. Darn it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how to make a pocket because some people aren't always aware that pockets are so easy they to are. make. They are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking a pre-cut. This is going to be in your product sheet, by the way. And I'm going to score a half inch on three of the four sides. So I'm going to make sure it's two of the short sides, one of the long side. I'm going to mm -hmm. go ahead and use my paper trimmer again. We're using this for the entire card, basically. Again, I'm going over it multiple times to break down the fibers of this paper because I am going to be folding it for um, this pocket. So I'm going to again switch it half inch, break it down a few times, flip it one more time. So half three inch. sides and a half an inch. Yep, yeah, but make sure that you're two shorter sides or two of the three sides that you okay. go ahead and do. Now, okay. move this out of the way. 
bringing back in my absolute favorite tool ever, the bone folder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to begin to crease what we did. Okay. On those two shorter sides. All right, so once you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and watch how easy this is. Take my scissors. Now, I don't know if you can see it, it might be difficult on camera, but there's a square here from the overlapping of the two creases. Mm -hmm. All I'm going to do is cut up to that crease where those two creases meet. Okay. Okay. Basically, all that's doing is going to leave me an option now to pop out that square. Because mm -hmm. that's okay. got to be like your Just chatty like area, right? This is a tab. We're making tabs. Okay. That gets to be cleanup duty. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Making a tab. All right. Now, we're going to fold in that bottom piece. Go just like that. Now, I'm bringing on my tearing tape. When I was a kid, <laughs> you and I used to call this chihuahua tape. The chihuahua tape. Because we used to joke, you could stick a chihuahua to the wall because it was so it's strong. very strong. So that's yes. honestly what I still call it. I always <laughs> have to remind myself, it's not chihuahua tape. It's not chihuahua tape. Tear and tape. I gotta be a professional. <laughs> it's in our online store. It is in our online store. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you tear and tape. I almost said it. I almost said it. I'm going to put tear and tape here in the great gets its name because you tear. Right. And I'm going to put it on the other side. Right. Right here. And I'm going to tear. Ah. And one then in, one, oh, what I'm going to do outside. is I'm going to burnish this. Super important. Because it's double-sided. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it, it can be a pain sometimes to lift. I don't Love use this. this. <laughs> sometimes you have to listen to your mom, I right? I know. <laughs> and it comes right up with the take your picture. <laughs> All right. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. You can see I kind of went went over, yeah, but we're going to fix okay. that. And right. if you hang over a little bit, you can always curl it back. That's exactly again. what I'm going to do. But it's nice, strong tape, and it yep. does stick to itself well. All right. And then I'm going to flip that back on itself, and then I'm going to press. Oh, I did the wrong hey, thing. That's what I thought. I was Why like, oh. stop me. Well, because I thought maybe you knew something. I didn't know. Stop. I'm going to teach you guys a <laughs> trick. Okay. Okay, because remember, we don't stamp together. All right, I've done this. We've all done this, and I'm going to show you how to fix it. Are you ready? Okay, wait. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Yes. This is in my craft room favorites. Excellent. This is an embossing powder bag. I know what you're going to do. Okay, this is the wrong side. Correct. You are going to powder this baby. Love it. It takes all the adhesive away. Perfect. It, it, it will not stick. Okay. So now I'm going to let you redeem yourself. Let's do it. <laughs> Because right. you know what? If we don't make mistakes, they have no way of knowing. Now, you're looking at this freaking out, right? So watch. Here's another crazy Lisa thing. You've all got these. These sticky lint rollers. Oh, my gosh, you guys. You need these for your craft room. I have this. It picks up all those little dimensional backings. It picks up all the embossing powder, all the lint, the stuff that gets in your ink pads. It's nasty, nasty. And when it gets really bad, you can just peel it off. And do you know what else I love it for? What? When I am die cutting and you've got all those little bits and pieces on your clear cutting mats, just swipe this across there and it picks up all of that and you don't have to pick it off. Wonderful, wonderful thing. Love it. You can get these at the dollar store now. Yeah. They'll look at you. All right. Like so a pro. Okay. We fixed it. Great. We did. Of course. I know I'm not the only one who does that. I've so. done it. That's how I know. All right. So I just put the bottom panel up on the two so it's now taped. Correct. And I put an additional piece of tear and tape at the bottom. Okay. So now we have pack. the three. We've made sort of a pocket. Uh huh. I'm gonna bring in my front of my card, and I'm just gonna place that right here. Are you doing the bottom of the card or the bottom of the DSP? Bottom or of the DSP. Bottom of the, of the DSP layer. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Oh my gosh, this is so stinking clever. And then what I'm gonna do? Is that some more DSP to it? On top, of course. Right. And this paper is so cute because of the um, the decorative elements that are inside of it. Mm -hmm. So you're going to use your silicone craft sheet? Yep. Keep going. All right. So here I am. I've got my hair in. Okay. So I'm going to add him to the front of the card. And of course, I want dimensionals because you want this to be the focal point to this Miura card. So I'm going to turn this upside down. I am very generous with these, my friends. Balance your projects out if you have sizable panels. If you're going to mail your card, you need to be cognizant that it goes through the mail meter at the post office that has rollers in it. And I know because I have friends, and of course my mom was one of them before she moved nearby, that said, oh my gosh, it came out lopsided. And I know that's because I didn't put enough dimensionals. Close the card. 
because you don't want anything beyond here. It's going to stick to the inside. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to move this all the way over, leaving a small margin here and at the bottom, and I'm going to tack that in place. Now, before you joined me, I went ahead and I used the greeting from the exact same stamp set and I played up that gold in the designer series paper and I right. heat embossed my greeting. Now, I want to overlap this. And one of the things that many people tell me when they're stampers, new stampers, is, mm -hmm. well, when I overlap it and I put my dimensionals on, it's wobbly. Well, that's because this panel is already elevated. So on this side of my greeting, I'm going to need adhesive right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add my adhesive to this side, but on this side is where I'm going to add my dimensional because that's going to compensate for that elevation difference. Again, keep your card closed so you stay within the perimeter. And if you're wondering if this is going to fit in a standard A2 envelope, the answer is yes, yes it will. It's a hair narrower, so it's four inches versus right. four and a quarter. It's the perfect five and a half. Beautiful, beautiful. So here is my card, but you have got to see the pocket on her card. All right, so I went ahead and put the DSP on the pocket. It's completely covering the pocket. It's a little surprise. This actually is designer series paper. So cute. Isn't that so cute with the little bear and everything? Again, it coordinates with the Happier Than Happy stamp set. I'm going to teach you a little trick on how to hide the ends of ribbon mm -hmm. when you use it as a pull tab. So that's exactly what I'm creating right now as a pull tab. So what I'm going to do, more turn and tape. Here we go. Because, you know, adhesive is not strong enough for that not, cotton frayed ribbon. That ribbon not. is super soft and it's super fun. And it just screams baby to me. Mm -hmm. I do too. Cute? It's soft and cute just like babies. Now hang tight because remember, we have six other samples to share with you. Four more that are inside your free project sheet. And two are a bonus for the live stream because we always practice before we go live. Yep. It's a big deal for us. And look at that. So I'm just folding it right on itself. Now what I'm doing, again, is more... Tear and tape. Gotta love that stuff. So putting it on the front and the back of the little fold tab. All I did was fold the ribbon onto right. itself. So it's got a loop. Yep, it's got a loop at the top. Fantastic. And you know what? Wait until you see how this all works in the pocket. You're gonna be like, I have to make this. The other thing is you're gonna notice in Gina's project sheet, when she's done with this pocket card, she did not in originally add this designer series paper layer to your first card. You're right, yeah. And I want you to know that that's an option. And this time she did so that you could see it both ways, which I loved about that alternative because not only did we show you how to make it. Okay, so I have an extra piece of Sahara sand and all I'm doing is using that as a layer, but to hide the ends mm -hmm. of your now pull tab from the ribbon, all you have to do is before you add your next layer, just place that right there in the center and then add your layer. Okay, do you have to adhere the rest of that down? I do. So I like to go in later with tear and tape. Yeah, or card surgery with glue dots. That's also good. Also, you can use a dimensionals, yeah. which I actually used the first time. Really? So should I do that? Yeah, you okay. can. Let's do that. I wasn't planning on doing that because I didn't oh, have my dimensionals one. ready. Oh, that's fine. So you're just tucking them in. This is what I call card surgery. So there's a large area of the card that is open. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is then just jerry-rig the pieces inside. Right. Now, and this is great for people who are brand new paper crafters because oftentimes the mechanics of a fun fold especially has them kind of like reeling. Did I put it in the right, right. place? Rather than ripping it apart, there you go. Boom. You can just Just like that. So cute. So now what we do is we make our pocket. Oh my gosh, so cute, so cute. Oh, we got an, I need this. This, oh, yeah. you need this all the time. Yeah. So this Opens allows you pocket. to open the pocket. Yeah. And then and that's gonna, gonna slide in. down on the side. Oh my gosh, yep. it's so stinking cute. Oh. So and cute. so he just pulls out and says, hello. Now you have a greeting. I do have a greeting and I have a little bit of assembly on the front to do. Now, if you're looking at the silver tray, that's our Titan tray. It's also in our craft room favorites. We love that for our small dies because we were forever losing them. Yes. <laughs> you know, the little dies that cut out these mushrooms is really tiny. But we also found that it works great for the small pieces once they're die cut. So that has a huge magnetic bottom on it. And we've linked it for you in the craft room favorites just to help you at home if you find that that's going to be something you need. Also, that sticky spot where that glue was, this is why I love the silicone craft sheet. I can simply rub it right off. It just balls off and comes right off. And you know what? This is another reason for your take your pick tool. Have you ever tried to pick these up with arthritic fingers? Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Look I'm at how there. cute. I'm oh just my using gosh, some glue cute. dots now and I'm making my focal point. So these are the mushrooms that you just stamped in a solid color. 
Yep, I stamped them in solid color, came the stamp set. Everything is die cuttable. Is that I the word? Is that a word? I don't know. We just made it one. Everything you can die cut. There we go. Because it comes in the bundle. So you just stamped them and die cut them all. Yep, I stamped them and die cut them all, and I'm just going to kind of arrange it. And hey, I'm going to make a plug right now for that brand new magnetic cutting plate. Yes. Now, I was skeptical because we had had one before and I wasn't thrilled. I purchased it. That thing is a champ. Yep. Okay, love it. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. Oh, it's not coming out because that, that tape. <laughs> no, but I put, get the other one. Let's show them this one. You know what? It never fails. No, it came out, honey. Oh, it, it, it wasn't yeah, pulling out. It, you remember, it's like it's like virgin paper is what I say. Yeah, this, this, one, put, this one works paper. Look at this. Perfect. Awesome. Now, we've got lots of other samples to show you. Again, yep. no DSP panel here, but I really like it because this is very intuitive. Yep. Super cute. All right. So here were the first two. We've got this one, of course, with the heron, and she's got her baby card. All right. What do you got next? Next, I have... Go for it. Boom. Uh, cottage Rose. Everybody's, Abigail Rose. Yes. Has, Ab Abigail, Abigail Rose is the paper, and then Cottage, cottage Rose. Rose is the stamp set. Oh, this has been a big fan favorite, this so paper. So all I did was I stamped it in memento ink. Black. And then it might be hard to see, but I took um, my alcohol blending, the combo blends, blends. Mm -hmm. and all I did was go ahead and oh, outline some of now. those sketch marks. Yeah, with the And gray. I did that with gray, and I also did it with the petal pink. This is beautiful. And... Die cut. Ooh, look at those pearls. Die cut again. Oh, We're back. we are back. We don't even know what happened, my friends. We owe you an apology. Hold on. Obviously, Lisa leaned on a button. This is what happens when you're in a live stream. Are you there? You are there. Oh, good heavens. There we go. Let's show you ours. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> this is bad. All right. This is best of butterflies. Isn't this cheerful? Yep. I want to show you what I did here. This is where I use those in-color matte dots. I had just brought in some dimension to this. So these dyes are fantastic. You're going to see me use a lot more of this. Again...